What's up YouTube, Kyron back up in here with another video. And today we have a pickups video. I haven't done one of these in about maybe over a month or so at this point, if I'm calculating correctly. There was definitely not enough for a full video for a very long time. And then I took a recent trip to Toronto recently. It was the best time ever. I'm still debating in this video if I'm gonna end up putting the vlog clips from Toronto in this video or just taking the time and making a full length vlog. But I mean, whatever you guys end up seeing, you're gonna make, you're gonna see what my decision was by the time you watch this video. So anyway, all that to say, went to Toronto, ended up getting a very fair amount of clothing out there. Um, so I ended up completing this video, which is amazing. So that is a plus for you guys, plus for me, everybody wins. You know what I mean? I get to get the garms, you guys get some entertainment out of it. Everybody is happy in the world. So um, we're gonna get into a bunch of pieces. Uh, I did go a little silly in Toronto uh, and you guys are gonna see what the result of that is right now. So we'll get into the first one. We'll start off heavy. Uh, there's not gonna be a particular order in this video, but we're gonna get into some very fun bits for sure. You guys know how much I love y'all. I, I I made sure with being even overweight in my luggage, carrying multiple bags, a full oversized Rick tote, I still made sure to preserve the packaging for the Balenci bag. So I went to the in-store at Balenciaga in Yorkville, which is in Toronto, if you guys don't know. The shopping in flagship locations in Toronto beats Montreal by a long shot, all we really have is Holt Renfrew and Essence. So it's pretty lackluster in Montreal in terms of shopping, as crazy as that may seem, being that I am a fashion content creator in Montreal. You would hope that I would side without here, but personally, it was my first time spending a lot of time in the city of Toronto, and I could say in this current state of fashion between the two cities, Toronto got it in terms of the in-store shopping experience. They just got more product more stores to pick from they just got it they just got it and so much so that it impulsed me to get a balenciaga item at full price which was so hard to do because i normally don't do that i'm being a brat but they were just so good i had to do it um so you guys are gonna get my unboxing experience right now it took me two days to decide whether or not to do this or not I went in store with some friends, saw the piece. Sales associate was super nice. She worked at the HQ in Paris, which is insane. And then now she's in Toronto for some reason. Got my little receipt. Got this little pamphlet situation. Receipt. Pants were expensive as hell, as you could believe. Don't want to get into that because it's going to make me cry. But um, yeah, you guys are going to be like, what the? You already have a pair of these, but I'll compare them so that you guys kind of see the difference. But yeah. Balenciaga little sticker tag, whatever right there. I'm gonna turn that away because it's not that serious. It's never that serious. And we have yet another pair of the black baggy blue, like skater denim, I guess you would call it. The difference with these, the wash is a lot lighter than the pair I had before. And it's a lot more mid to low waisted, I would say. Still made in Japan, still a beautiful light blue baggy pair of jeans. The only difference is it already comes with pre heel bite, which some people might love, some people might not. I know regardless, it's gonna happen to the jeans anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. It kind of gives you a bit more peace of mind when you're destroying the hell out of the pants anyway. So that's that. Beautiful pair of jeans though. You guys know how much I rave about the Balenciaga denim just because I feel like it is the best baggy jean if you are able to justify the price point most people can't so that's why i've offered a bunch of alternatives to these denims but these are definitely like the top of the pyramid in my personal opinion i got these to replace these i'll get right into them in a second so i got so i got these so i got these to replace the pair i have here you can kind of see the difference in the wash these are definitely lighter this is more like a mid to light wash still love these very much the wash is still very beautiful i'm debating if i should let them go or not but i just can't justify like two light wash pair of balenciaga denim the reason why i got these is because they fit even better than these even though these fit so well the only thing that i did not enjoy about these was that they were a bit too high-waisted in my opinion and that's not something i was going for i was going for like a mid to low waist vibe for a baggy pair 
a blue denim. And on top of that, at the hip, it was kind of like a bit tight because I have larger thighs slash hips. So it wasn't as forgiving as the pair that I have here. So it was fulfilling a lot of the things that I wanted out of a pair of baggy denim. So I might just let these go, have someone else enjoy them uh, more than than me just keeping them in a closet and like waiting for a, an appropriate occasion to wear a darker light blue denim. I might as well just be smart and have one that does everything that I need, which would be this pair. So super grateful, super happy. Let's keep on with the keeping on. Okay, so these next two pieces are super sick. One is from Alex Maximenko, the other one is from Archive Threads. Both are like archive menswear and womenswear sellers based out in Toronto. I went to their, their studio to go look through their selection. I'm not the biggest archive guy. There is a certain amount of pieces that I do enjoy, of course, and I do feel like kind of elevates what you enjoy out of clothing by knowing like dated pieces and things from designers, arsenal. It kind of just expands your knowledge and expands uh, what you're seeing in the now. A lot of people get caught up into like consuming contemporary fashion, but not really going back and finding what they liked from previous collections. And that's what I kind of like to enjoy from time to time. I'm not the biggest guy to do that, but sometimes I enjoy this. So this is Junia Numbers. I believe this is from Spring Summer 03. Very linear to the poem collection, of course, very reminiscent to that, but the Numbers one is just as prominent and, uh, lucrative i guess you could say but yeah junior Watanabe. if it's gonna focus junior come they got some man size medium beautiful beautiful shirt just love all the details on it uh the pink really does stand out against that blue uh and the outfit that i wore for this was just i loved it it was like some like one of the better ones that i've done in a long time the, something that i was proud of to get experimental with never really layered a short sleeve button up under a zip up hoodie before it was fun. Definitely recommend other people to try it as well. Um, but yeah, love that piece. Shout out to Alex, crazy one. Uh, not something that you see every day. Uh, and got me into my little archive bag, you know? And I don't really get to freak it down too much, but when I pop out, I get good pieces like that one, you know? And, and it, it ended up being a trade too, which is great. So I didn't have to like break too much bread, which is amazing. Kind of, they get to enjoy some clothes. I get to enjoy some clothes. Circle of life. Let's get to the one from Archive Threads. You guys know how much we love our boy V, RP Virgil, you already know. So here we have from Archive Threads, I believe is from the first collection, Virgil Abloh LV. I don't know what size it is. It's definitely not supposed to be my size, but it does fit me. So I'm excited about that. Super boxy, really nice fit, like I said before. And the only real thing that screams LV is this little this little like uh, metal emblem of sorts right here, which is super cool. So it doesn't really say, look at me, I'm wearing Louis Vuitton. Uh, it just kind of gives you this psychedelic tie dye situation. So it's very ambiguous. You don't really know what it could be, but for those who know, they know. Also has this kind of like interlock steam detail at the sleeve, which I enjoy as well. But yeah, love this piece, super incognito for those who know type vibe, and we get the support of our boy V from, from a different angle, you know what I mean? So, super dope. RPV, fire piece, let's keep it going. All right, now here we have a pair of frames I've been having a tough time pronouncing. I believe it's Port Tan Tanger or Tanger. Don't know what it's supposed to be, but I seen these glasses in a bunch of different places and I was trying to figure out where to get them, but they were right in front of my face the whole time. You could get them on Essence, but all the ones that are on Essence, I don't really love right now. But when I was in Toronto, they had these available at the Contraband Archive store, which everything was 60% off, which was like, I'm like, come on now, that's perfect. I think these were like 450, so with the 60% off, they're like two bills or something like that after tax. So yeah. I had, to, I had to scoop them, let's get into them. Uh, but yeah, I think I seen these on draft day with that whole... I keep all blues like a jazz player, call me Carl Malone. He ain't get a pape up yet, it's cool. He got late fees. I don't know if it's this exact model, but the first time that I was like, yo, what sunglasses are those? Me and my boy Max were trying to figure out the brand. Then we hit up our boy John, who's a buyer at Essence, and he was able to tell us what brand of glasses they were. And it's this brand right here. 
But yeah, really nice pair of sunglasses right here. I've been trying to get back into my sunglass wave because I sold a bunch of mine because I felt like they didn't suit my style anymore. But um, these, I was like, oh. as soon as I put them on, I was like, Fuck, man. spending more money like Kai, come on, bro. But they, they did fit very, very well. I couldn't, couldn't knock it. So here we have the Portanger, Portanger sunglasses. These are kind of hitting right now, even with this outfit. Come on, are you kidding me? Super fly. Like, they just suit my face really well. Like, I find it hard to have sunglasses that kind of complement my eyebrow shape and my overall head shape. Something to take into account for sure. I love the yellow tints on the lenses. You guys know yellow is my favorite color. And it's not too, like, straight in your face type of yellow. Love the, like, little hit on the side, kind of reminiscent of Celine. The eye shape is super sick as well. And yeah, man, the acetate feels very solid. Made in Japan. That is the sunglasses. Super tough, love them. Definitely check out the brand. They make amazing stuff. Highly recommend. All right, next up, another Toronto piece. Something a little small, you know, something light. Had to go into a better gift shop. Definitely a Toronto staple when you go into the city. They had a lot of cool little stuff there for the boy also picked up like some incense and stuff but i unpackaged it already so unfortunately i won't be showing that but yeah really cool little new york yankees cap they did a series of these they did like a new no they did a la one la dodgers and they did a blue jays one and they also did the yankees but the only thing that's different with this is that has a little apple where like the little eyelet situation would be and then has that patch on the side. Better gift shop. The only thing with this is that it's one size bigger than my normal size. You guys are gonna be like, you have a big ass head, but uh, I'm normally seven and five eighths. I got this one in seven and three fourths because the only one left. Still able to manage to wear it, but uh, unfortunately right now I won't be able to put it on because got my hair in a little ponytail situation. So you guys are just gonna have to imagine, but it's just a New York Yankees cap at the end of the day. Talking too long about it. There you go. <laughs> Next up, we got this Akimbo Club. Whoa. Akimbo Club pink hoodie. Really cool hoodie. Re very reminiscent of the Russell Athletic um, vintage hoodies that they tend to source a lot because it's a vintage resale company at the end of the day, but now they're making their own like private label goods. Um, so I'm sure there's like a lot of referencing to the boxy hoodies that they tend to sell, um, but now they have their own that they just pump out. I seen that they dropped like a real tree one recently. That is super fire, very up my alley. Hopefully I'm able to snag one of those down the line, but yeah, I got this in a size large. Made in LA. The French Terry is really good quality, you could tell. The hand feel is really sick. And also just pink is a nice little pop color, something to like break away from all just like the neutral tones that we tend to wear. Um, but yeah, super fun. I was wearing this a lot in the fall as we're creeping away from fall now with November coming in and winter slowly about to close in on uh, us Canadians. It's fun to have something a bit more vibrant to make it less dull, you know? So really nice hood, definitely worth checking out Akimbo Club if you're looking for just an essential hoodie, uh, they make great hoodies and also sell good vintage hoodies. So if you're looking for that, definitely go check them out. All right, random order of this whole video. I'm telling you, nothing is gonna make sense, but we're gonna get straight into it always. This haven't shown off since September uh, when I was actually doing the campaign work with Koss, but this is the leather Koss bag. This is obviously more of like a purse iteration than the big ass um, side quilted bag that they make. But what's cool about this is it's made with real leather, real like calfskin or lambskin leather. I don't know which one of the two it is, but it is authentic, which is really cool. I, I learned from the cost team. Also has this leather patch on the inside, same cost, super cool. I'm hoping that I get my hands on the big one. I don't think it's looking likely for the boy. Hopefully I could like turn my cards around with that, but this is still sick. Like I was never the biggest, like, can I get busy with a purse type of dude, but it doesn't really feel that way, especially when you like put it to the back or if you're wearing a bit more of like an androgynous type of fit, you could kind of make it work. I've always been a little scared to pull it off, but I think I've been able to every time that I've wanted to pull it out as a piece, it kind of works. 
and also like just I don't know it kind of works man I don't know it depends on how brave you are to rock the purse situation because this is clearly one there's no way of getting around it it just is what it is but you could carry all your daily essentials in there definitely um I just wish there was like maybe a side back uh um crossbody strap of sorts because that would make it a lot a lot more brave a, a lot easier to wear for a man for sure so there we go maybe i just have to man up and stop overthinking it it's still a nice piece and i hope i get the larger one down the line speaking of quilted bags you guys know everyone loves these damn bags you got the big quilted one in white or cream, whatever you want to call it. Obviously the exposure is going all over the place because I have my light on it, but you guys can imagine you've seen these a million times. Definitely one of my favorite bags. Use these all the time. I use my black one for the gym like every single week. Um, fits a bunch of stuff. Classic bag, bro. Can't really go wrong. I feel like everyone loves these. Every time I, I bust one out, people are like, bro, where the hell you get this bag, bro? It's so good. It's a good one. It's very sturdy cool bag i'm happy that this got brought into the space because it's definitely added a lot to the bag space for sure and the iterations just keep on getting better and better shout out to cost cream quilted puffy next up still in the cost theme also from when i was out in new york these are some baggy cream almost khaki wide trousers super super wide and if you guys didn't know the women's trousers definitely fit a whole lot better than the men's ones i find they're just a lot wider uh, they get more creative with like the cuts and the detailing in terms of like the pleats in the front and all that so i'm definitely a big fan of the women's trousers i got these in a size 12 i'm normally a 32 waist and they fit me perfectly so definitely recommend checking out the cost women's trousers if you ever get a chance to go in store or even online whichever you have the access to i highly recommend good wide leg opening perfect for everything you need out of a wide trouser for a fair price point i think they're like around the 200 dollars price range so alrighty, last piece from cost i believe is this knit orange cashmere sweater really really nice piece i don't get too many knits but when i do I'm always grateful because there's always a moment where you need something a bit more like like kind of formal but not really you know like you can easily dress this up you know what i mean like sometimes you can't wear a hoodie sometimes you got to pull out a little cardigan or a sweater of sorts like this and get your fancy pants on you know so 100 percent cashmere you're definitely looking chic in this one no doubt about it uh got this in a size large and i also believe this is a women's piece funny enough so the cost section is lit when it comes to the women's wear pieces so definitely worth a shout give it a go they got some stuff in there highly recommend cool nice pop color too for the for the fall orange you know it works all right so next up i got this coat from camille fortune i, I believe that's how you pronounce the last name f-o-r-t-g-e-n-s yes yes that is it. I believe they're based out of London. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff. I believe I had a pair of baggy blue tie-dye-ish corduroy pants. I know that's a mouthful, but they were beautiful. And I found out about them randomly through Essence. I was just browsing through the selections and they just made amazing pants. So I, I bought them and they were like a pretty fair price. Um, and then I believe I tagged them on like a post or something and the team reached out and I asked them if they wanted to work or like if they had anything from the new collection. This was definitely the star of the show. Um, this beautiful wool overcoat with a lot of like raw, just unfinished seams. This definitely stands out. I was wearing this a whole lot while I was out in Toronto and a lot of people were very impressed by it. Just like a lot of people haven't thought to just leave the seams of a garment kind of unfinished, but also finished. So it, they do continually fr fray but it doesn't open up and like deconstruct the garment in any type of way, if that makes sense. And that is carried along through a lot of different components of the piece. Like you can see it here on the pocket details, on the collar, kind of all over the place, you know? And I made sure to keep the tag on so you guys could, could see that. I need, to, I need to get busy. There we go. And then we got the actual tag right there. But yeah, beautiful like herringbone almost. And it's just like a nice tannish brown color. Super long, basically touches the floor. It has the fishtail at the bottom. 
if that's what you would call it, just to make it a bit more mobile. And yeah, beautiful fall coat, can't really go wrong. Amazing, emerging designer that I'm super grateful to have worked with. Um, they sent me this coat and I'm super grateful. You'll definitely be seeing me wearing this a whole ton during the fall, winter months for surely. And yeah, just grateful to have another coat to the arsenal because whenever I get a coat, there's not too many on the, on the rack. So I'm grateful for every single one that I have. All right, so a bit of like accessories and miscellaneous stuff right now. Get into these first, some kicks. Actually, hold this up, might as well. Got these at the new Kith store. So this was quite fun of an experience. The new Kith store in Toronto is super sick. On the top floor, they have the treats, of course, like the, the ice cream and all that. But in addition, they added a Sedell's. I never had Sedell's in New York. Every time I've gone, it's either been too hard to book or it's a lot of money for a lot of people. So people don't want to like break that bank for brunch. I totally respect that, I understand. But whenever I travel, I like to get good eats. So finding people that like the good eats, these are these are the connections we enjoy in life, you know? So when I went to Toronto this time around, I linked up with a few friends of mine that were down to try it because they live out there, but haven't tried it yet. Tried it, really enjoy it. A good brunch is always a good brunch, but now I have to compare it to the New York one and the Miami one because I never had it before. So now it's like kind of backtracking, but Sedell's gets the Kai stamp. I rate it. It was a great time. And at the same time, ended up doing a little shopping in Kith, which I rarely get a chance to do. Um, I don't really find, I just haven't been buying a lot of sneakers and I kind of got uh, bullied into buying these. Not bullied, no, no, no one put a gun to my head or anything, but people were saying they looked good. So I was like, I mean, hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna not listen to the people. So I ended up doing it. We got the freaky, the freaky ass Sambas, leopard. Definitely can't wear these right now because the moment it snows, you're not seeing these on the floor. And even right now, I feel like the, it doesn't do them justice breaking them out in November. You know, maybe if I travel or something, like if I go to like Miami for Art Basel or something, maybe I'll pack these because then that'd be a cool little like summery type of sneaker to be wearing, like in a, a better environment than salty, slushy Montreal. So this might be an option, but really cool details. I love like the furry type of elements on the leopard itself, the cream on the heel. Uh, the only thing I don't love is the like satiny type of inside of the shoe. Really do enjoy that the tongue element of the shoe as well that it folds down but i was really debating between these and the black and cream ones just because i was like i know i'm going to be able to wear the black and cream ones so much more but they seemed a little boring i was like i already have black sambas and if i wanted a black low profile sneaker like this i'd probably get gats like the margella gats so i was like let me just get these and be interesting for once and then get the gats down the line if i really need like a black high quality sneaker so that was my decision making process while getting these next up random super random and you guys might be like kyron this probably sounds like a dumbass decision on your behalf but i just got the iphone 15. i'm not saying that's a dumb, dumb decision the case probably some people are gonna be like are you freaking an idiot but i got a ramoa case i'm a hoe yes i get it i know like i'm i'm literally one of those guys now but it's so sexy you can't tell me it don't look sexy bro come on man that shit hit that is hidden bro Come on, bro. And you use your phone, you use your phone every day, bro. I'm gonna have this phone for two years. I like lease my phones. So this for two years, the amount of you use your phone every day, I was like, I'll have a sexy phone, bro. I'm down to have a sexy phone. Who, who doesn't wanna have a sexy phone? Kidding me? So got that at the Ramoa store in Toronto. I actually got this before I even went to Toronto because there was only two cases left at the Ramoa store and I didn't want to not get it. So my boy proxied it, put it aside at a store. I got it when I went to Toronto. The rest is history. Ramoa iPhone case. Sexy iPhone cases, all 2023 and 24. Some apothecary to switch it up. I actually got this just today because Montreal finally has a little labo store. So fire. Not an actual physical store. Well, it's a physical store. It's not an actual like flagship store, but it's a pop-up within Holt Renfrew. Still grateful 
still able to go there and now I think eventually they're gonna have like the refill station and stuff so I don't have to go to Toronto anymore if I ever have to like refill my fragrances and all that so super grateful also I just love their products so like definitely gonna be there maybe a little bit too much and of course when we went to go see if the rumors were true that we got one we were blessed with the the facts that it actually is there so I got just one thing um I was actually in need of this and we ended up getting it I think they gave us some samples too what they give us pomade sample boom what else face lotion Probably can't use that because it's like heavy fragrances and stuff, but also nice. Body cream, boom. Gonna use that as a hand cream as well because that's the only thing I could use really. All in one cleanser. That I could probably try, but we'll see. How, we'll have to see about that one. Shower gel. Things in life I wish I could use. I have such sensitive skin, it literally sucks, dude. And what we actually got, I've been looking for a good lip balm for a minute and I had the Aesop one. It was good. It just, you, I felt like you had to reapply too much. And I like Aquaphor, but the Aquaphor that I like isn't the stick one. It's the one out of a tube. And the tube one, they only make like a medium sized one that's like better to fit in a bag, not in your pocket. So I haven't really been having lip balm when I go out, if, especially if I don't have a bag. Uh, which has sucked, especially in transitional seasons like this. So I've been shopping around for one. And then when I was in the store, I was like, do you guys even make a lip balm? I didn't even know if Ulabo did. And I was like, expecting it to like smell good and everything. It actually doesn't, it's just formulated to be very hydrating. It's made out of shea butter. It's amazing, I really enjoy it. It's like very reminiscent to the um, way Aquaphor feels. So that already, gave it a huge win in my books and yeah it lasted a while it was out for maybe about like maybe three hours or so when i first tried it or maybe two and a half and it was good and then now it probably is when i would re reapply but still feels good still feels soft um definitely recommend this make sure your lips aren't chapped when you're out there fellas okay we got it we got to make sure we do better i make sure we're standing correctly but yeah this is going to be a daily essential always going to be in the pockets now I rate it. <laughs> Next up, a little switch up. We got some literature, you know. Actually went to this store called Soup Soup, which was a publication shop that was recommended to me by my boy Nat. Uh, it's very reminiscent to like what you would find in like a London publication or magazine shop, uh, where it's just like the whole wall is just straight amazing publications from like all of the main fashion and like lifestyle entertainment magazines of the world if you will um and i went to soup soup and they also carry clothing in soup soup which was really cool they carry like ernest w baker and like uh it costs a lot of really interesting buys but yeah in general i was looking at the publications and this is one that stood out to me really sick little branding they have the little soup soup stickers as soup soup on the little <laughs> on the um, perfume bottle, but we're gonna destroy that, unfortunately. And here we have this beautiful, oh, and they gave me a sticker too. Definitely going on the laptop with it. Had a great conversation with the owner over at Soup Soup. She was super nice, so nice to have met you. Um, this is now not about you, not about youth. So basically the premise of this book or publication, if you want to call it, is it was based off of a article of CSM students that were detailing their issues with carving their way through the industry while also attending CSM. As I don't know, I don't think you guys know, but like that was my dream school to get into. I've like talked about this ages and ages. Like I've, if I had money like that, I definitely would have tried to go the CSM route because everyone knows it's kind of like the lucrative, like elusive school to attend to. And like everyone kind of just gets handpicked out of there if they want to get progressed into fashion. But it's all obviously not as easy as it seems. I'm sure a lot of people just hear about that and then they immediately go and it's not always uh, rainbows and and butterflies but this article was kind of unpacking that and like showing how there's so much things that you don't really get to see in the industry so it was all like anonymous it was like a lot of like blacked out like n no names were shown and then all the identities of the people on the pages were switched or not even the actual people which is crazy 
uh, and then they did that same idea and then applied it to people in the actual industry. So they don't say the names of the brands and they don't say the names of the people and they don't, the names of the, the faces of the people that are shown in this are not even the actual people. So it's kind of sick. Like you can see, like, look, like they'll like show a face that's not even that guy's actual face of the person that they're talking about. They'll also blank out the names. So it's kind of like, it's kind of interesting, you know? I'm really interested to read this. Like, I'm super fascinated about like all the 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 drama, the tea that's to come out of this. So it'll get me reading again, which I'm really excited about. So hopefully, I'm gonna clear this up in the next couple of months. And different scoops for the pickups. We love it. Let's keep it going. Ending off the pickups with a little some 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 jackets. Why not? You know. So we have this moto racing jacket but it's a puffer which is super sick I'm gonna close this up so that people can see that got this moto racing puffer with the gills has it on the back as well super super sick and this is from aa spectrum they were kind enough to send this to me which i'm super grateful for i did like this editorial shoot in it and it came out really nice uh so i was happy with that also got it i believe in this size medium i could be wrong I think I got in a size medium or large, but yeah, really nice piece. Super big fan of like bringing two different things and merging it together uh, makes for a good end result, definitely. And I enjoyed wearing it. It's a good like piece for this time of year where you like can't wear big ass jackets, but you don't want too light of a jacket because you're going to be too cold. So great piece for this time of year. Also, we got orange going on. So you see a little bit of a theme, orange book, orange card. Mm orange sweater, orange jacket. Coincidence? Maybe not, who knows. Just when I thought it was done, this is a long video already, but we're gonna keep it going. We have this post archive faction puffer jacket. This is from the 5.1 collection, I believe. And what's cool about this is like all this like metallic black, super shiny. And it gives you like this, obviously I don't want to discredit the, the beautiful design of this jacket, but it just gives you that like nupsy energy without any type of branding at all. And obviously a clearly elevated design in terms of like how they crinkle the material amongst the whole down of the jacket. I've cinched it up a whole lot too, so that it gives that cropped effect. But yeah, I love how it has that reflective metallic nature to it, so that it gives a bit more sheen to something that's super plain, like a black. Uh, also went for an XL in this. It's on the right side of the collections that they make. You know, and yeah, post archive faction. Super grateful, bro. The team has been looking out for me, OD. They were nice enough to send this to me. So, like, dream come true, dude. Like, you have no idea. Like, literally, my boy John and I were talking about winter jackets, and he was looking to get this, and we we're like, yo, that's a sick jacket. You should definitely get it. And then, like, a week or two later, the homies at Path hit me up about this. And I was like, bro, like, I feel like I'm living in the matrix. It's insane. Completely forgot to show this at, well, there's always a, a right time or there's never a wrong time to show anything in the pickups videos, but I feel like I should have showed this a bit early on. This is a Skeena fuzzy fleece. I wore this in Toronto a whole bunch as well. Definitely one of my favorite pieces that I've worn this fall just because it stands out so much and it kind of fits perfectly into like the colorful design language that, well, yeah, the color, colorful design language that I appreciate in modern day. As you guys can see, I'm wearing kind of something a little fuzzy and colorful right now. Uh, but yeah, zip hoodies, I love. Knits, also love. Combination, perfect, you know what I mean? And. What's even cooler about this, John from Skeena, he's not even dropping this colorway. So I hate to break it to you guys, but this is a 101. He will be dropping another colorway of this. Don't know what it's gonna be. I believe it might be red, might be something else. You guys will have to see when they do launch because they haven't launched yet. So just make sure you guys go follow Skeena, stay up to date with everything that John is doing over there because um, it's amazing things always. So go support Skeena, the boy, come on. It's all we doing around here, supporting Amanda. More Dream Axe, crazy. Got some PR sent from Heliot Emil, bro. Crazy. 
Like literally from like back when I was in college hearing about Elliot Emil from like back then for the first time. Now full circle getting stuff sent to me by them is insane. They've been doing amazing stuff. The runways have been very beautiful recently and I'm just super grateful to even get any type of product from them or to be recognized in that type of way where they want to send me stuff. So extremely grateful. Thank you so much to the team over there. We got a furry shiesty. Come on. Yeah, so this is gonna be a sick one in the I think you guys can see that. But yeah, it's a shiesty. It's a furry shiesty. Really cool texture on that too. It's like pretty thick too, but also very malleable. Like it has some stretch, some give to it. Looks like it has a good shape as well. That's something that I really look for with like masks or shiesties or whatever you want to call them uh, because sometimes they feel a bit like blocky. But yeah, this one looks like it's made extremely well. I also really like that badge detail that they have right there. Ooh, that focus was hidden right there. Come on. Good job, camera. Good job. Um, also got the little tag right here. Love that detail. It's kind of like rubberized. And yeah, furry shiesty. We're going to have to try that out when... I get my hair retwisted because my hair is definitely not gonna fit in this right now. That with the Skeeta hoodie, could be a vibe. It's also black and navy. I know how people feel about that, but whatever. Last thing, this is the last thing they sent me. This is a bag. This looks so fire, dude. What? Helia to meal, like crossbody bag. I might mess around and use this for the gym, you know? Yeah, bro. Oh, when I'm biking. Ah, oh, biking season's done too. But I'm about to be fly as hell on my bike, bro. Bro, what? Are you kidding me? This is fire as hell, bro. Hard. Super tough, bro. Super tough. I'm, I'm grateful because I, I put two different bags as like options of things I would have been interested in. And this is the one that they ended up sending me. I'm grateful because honestly, I think this is the more impressive one out of the two. Zippers are super sturdy as well. Lots of space in there. Can definitely fit a good amount of things. Wow, impressive. Also, I like the magnet closure. Kind of makes things a bit simple. And yeah, bro. Killer bag, killer bag. Super happy with this. Biking is gonna be fun in the spring. I'm excited to bike again once it comes back. Wow, what a pickups video. Definitely a long one. I'm sorry that I had to put you guys through that, but it had to be done. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Haven't done one in a minute, so I had to come through correct and make sure that I bless you guys with a healthy one, you know what I mean? So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. It was so much fun to make, and I hope you guys come back to the next one, of course. Thank you guys for sort of supporting the channel so much. It's been so much fun making videos, always. And the one thing that you guys could do for me is keep on supporting. Like the video if you haven't already, subscribe if you're new. Uh, follow the boy on Instagram, G-O-T-S-W-E-I-G-E is where you can keep up to date with me more. Frequently I post fit pics, this and that, so that's what you can check out on there. Also follow the boy on TikTok, S-W-E-I-G-E, -E. that's where you can keep up to date with me on there as well. I'm gonna be posting more like short form content, this and that. And that's about it, man. Let me know what your favorite piece was in the, in the comment section below. <laughs> um, and also what you guys are feeling for this fall winter. Like what type of outdoor pieces are you feeling? How are we gonna accessorize? How are we gonna stay warm and fly at the same time? That's always a dilemma for me. But I feel like with some of the things that I got right here, it's definitely able to be possible. You know what I mean? So all that to be said, thank you guys for watching once again. I know I said that a million times, but I am super grateful. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.